and uh, he's uh, he's been a big integral part of the MABRC, and we always love to have him speak. And uh, you know, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him run with it. Well, I uh, let's see if I can get this to work without destroying it. I want to thank everybody for coming out here today. I hope it's going to be worth y'all's while. Uh, before we get on to the main part of this presentation, I'll give you a little bit of a background on myself. As Darren said, I'm the Western Oklahoma State Director for the MABRC. I'm also a member of APES, the Arkansas Primate Evidence Society, which the director of APES is right back there, and he's got a conference coming up not too far in the future. I'm sure he will talk about that a little bit. Uh, I grew up in the cross timbers of Oklahoma, which if you don't know what the cross timbers are, though, it's that bunch of woodland in the center part of the state that everybody forgets about being there. And I've had biological training. I've got degrees in natural science, uh, biology, and a few other ones that I picked up that I'm not sure how. Anyway, I've also done work with the Oklahoma Academy of Science, the OAS, and the Oklahoma Biological Survey. <laughs> Photo of me in my natural habitat, as I like to joke. Uh, it's pretty common to find me outside, so if I wasn't doing stuff Bigfoot related, I would be out there doing other things. So, Okay, one of the things that I've been doing is looking for sighting, resort, uh, sighting reports in alternative areas. Everybody goes to these Bigfoot websites to find reports. There's other stuff out there. Uh, paranormal websites, you'll have people that'll see these things and think they've seen a ghost. And when you can usually tell when you're reading what they wrote, what actually happened. Stuff like, well, that ghost was eight foot tall, hairy, and stole the ham out of my ice chest. <laughs> That wasn't a ghost. Uh, travel review websites where people go in these parks and stuff and go camping. Sometimes you'll read stuff like, well, it was a nice time, but those hairy guys in the bushes were grunting and throwing rocks at us. So, again, that's another place you can find potential reports. Uh, outdoor activity websites like um, geocaching or hiking. You'll, you'll see stuff like, well, I was hiking up the Ozark Trail, and I saw the funniest thing. This bear reached down and grabbed some acorns off the ground, then stood up and looked at me and ran off. Again, not what was reported, but potentially what we're after. Historical narratives. These are interviews with old-timers that the university sent out. You can find sighting reports in those. And... What's been a big boon to me as of late, old newspaper archives. You can find these things. The historical inter narratives, this is just recorded interviews. You can also find stuff in collections of folklore. And it kind of relates to what we're looking for. Uh, if you're looking for these old newspapers, you can go to your local libraries or a lot of them are on online websites. The National Library of Congress has got a great one. Well, so, with that being said, oh, yeah, I forgot. We need to read between the lines. When you look at these old newspapers, you'll often see the term wild man, but it doesn't always mean Bigfoot. Uh, it can refer to homeless people and drifters, or even people that were just living off the grid, kind of. Uh, people that were mentally ill, your crazy wild man down the road, uh, criminals that were on the run from the law, people that don't follow society, societal trends, that was a weird one. Apparently that's also a common term used for cross-dressers at the turn of the 20th century. The bear that wasn't. When you're doing this stuff, also pay attention to stories about bears because these things will often get called bears when they're not. A lot of times you'll read stuff like, well, the bear was out in the cornfield grabbing ears of corn and sticking under its arms, 
Then it walked off with all that corn under its arms. That's not a bear. Uh, a lot of times the behavior does not match. There's a good one from, uh, trying to remember, it's over in Arkansas where somebody said they seen a bear grab something and toss it over its shoulder like a sack of potatoes and take off with it. That's not a bear. Bears don't have shoulders. So yeah, pay attention to stories about bears. With that being said, I'm going to get on to the main body of this presentation. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting I added more in this. I apologize, I have morning amnesia. Uh, when you uh, find a story in the papers, it's often important to kind of track them back as another paper will pick it up, they'll add something, then another paper will pick it up and they'll add something. A lot of times when you go back to the original source, the, the original story doesn't quite look anything like what was reported. There was one that was talking about the famous Bigfoot Jocko that was captured up in British Columbia by railroad workers. Except this one had been picked up several weeks after the fact. And by this time, Jocko was an Indian boy in a blue suit with uh, a, a trumpet. When you go back to the original story, Jocko was this little hairy humanoid creature. But it just shows you that these newspapers would pick stuff up and exaggerate it as the stories went on. Okay, now we're getting to the actual presentation. Mm -hmm. Which means my morning amnesia has finally caught up with me, so I should be functioning now. So, The Chickasha Critter. Oklahoma's Forgotten Bigfoot. We have heard of stories of Bigfoot in Oklahoma. The Noxie Monster, arguably the most famous one in Oklahoma from the 70s. We've got the, the uh, Bigfoot siding out at the casino, 2000. Most people don't know this is not new. There was Bigfoot being seen in Oklahoma in 1900 and back in Indian Territory in the 1800s. But what was amazing for me, number one, this was pretty much in my own backyard, and I'd never heard about it. And this sighting outbreak was potentially one of the largest ones ever. These sightings went on and on and on, and I'll talk about that. Little background information on Chickasha. It's just southwest of Oklahoma City metro area. It was established in 1892. It was founded when the railroad went through Indian Territory. There is a, was a Wichita Indian village on the spot that is now lost to history. We don't know the name of it. Uh, in 1908, the Oklahoma College for Women was founded. It became USAO, the place I went to college at, in 1975. And this is a picture of Chickasha, seen from the air. It's just a typical small town, not too different from Stillwell. Uh, another town in the area that I need to talk about, since we're going to be talking about these in detail, Ninaka. This was founded by a group of Chickasaw living in the area in 18, or 19, yeah. It's supposed to say 1882, but I goofed up. Need to fix that. <laughs> but they set up their own little railroad depot, and it uh, was a place for them to do business. It's about seven miles away from Chickasha. And there's another town called Norge. It used to be called Alley in the 1860s. It was originally settled by Norwegians that were contracted out to farm for the Chickasaw. Uh, it was officially founded in 1908, seven miles southwest of Chickasha, five miles from Ninaka. So these two, three towns are all close together. And the Washita River flows right beside Chickasha. That's a good picture of it. And that kind of shows you what the river looks like. It's a long river, flows from the Texas Panhandle to the Red River, actually flows into Lake Texoma, 
It is literally just east of Chickasha. Has deep cut clay banks. It's not a rocky river, not a sandy river. Habitat. Chickasha sits on the cross timber divide. It's a thin strip of prairie that separates the western cross timbers from the post oak blackjack forest of the main body of the cross timbers. Now I'm telling you all this to give you a little bit of a historical narrative and a background for the area. The forgotten siding outbreak. The sightings were in the area around Chickasha, Ninica, and Norge. Uh, they were reported commonly in the local papers, and the sightings lasted from 1900 to 1922. Now think about that. The bulk of the Falk Monster sightings that made it infamous lasted about three years. This is two decades. And this was not just in the Chickasha papers. It got so bad that it actually seems to have had mass hysteria hit the area where everybody was freaking out about it. 1912 to 1913. What I like to call the years of the monster. Uh, the papers that were I find primarily found this in were the Oklahoma Indian Pioneer Papers. These were interviews with locals. The Chickasha Daily Express, the Oklahoma City Times, the Wichita Eagle, and the Alex Tribune. And there's probably more of them out there. I just didn't get my butt over to the Historical Museum in Oklahoma City to look through their archives. 1900, the first sighting. A local hunter was working in the swampy area along the Wichita River or Washita River, and he reported a strange, wild critter walking around. This is the first reference to the Chickasha critter. This was towards the end of the year 1900. 1905. A woman just west of Chickasha reported seeing a huge orangutan in a plum thicket. She thought it was getting plums. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen too many orangutans running around Oklahoma. A little bit of a problem there. The 1907 River Ghost. There was an African-American man fishing on the Washita, and he said he seen a huge black figure in the tree line walking around. He thought it was a ghost. And this is taken the same year, about in the same area of the Washita River. Uh, those are actually Comanche that are watering their horses. In this time frame, the, the Old West is still kind of alive in Chickasha and that part of Oklahoma. So you actually would still see Indians doing this stuff. Okay, the 1911 Taylor Farm incident. A farmhand was plowing his field, or his field, when he was found passed out. Uh, this was near Norge. He would later report seeing a horrible thing walking through the field. 1912. This is the start of the outbreak. The Ninica Critter Encounters. Lots of dogs around the town of Ninica and livestock began to get killed by something. Then one of the farmers reports seeing a great hairy brute in one of the thickets nearby. A group of people then witnessed the critter lift up a dog in its arms and kill it. A posse decided that they were going to go hunt this thing down and kill it once and for all. You might want to get used to hearing this. It's not the only group that went after this thing. Okay. A motorist driving from Ninica to Chickasha reported seeing a hairy, great hairy dragon carrying a dead animal across the road. Now, seems kind of unusual for the wording, but a great hairy dragon carrying a dead animal. Same time, a trapper working his lines on the Washita reported he was roared at by a huge creature. He thought it, he had assumed that this was the work of a, a big cat until he heard it. Uh, 
Okay. All right. Another Nenecom man reported seeing a cow-sized black beast grab and snap his bulldog like a twig. At the same time, they found giant footprints around. This is starting to sound like Bigfoot, ain't it? Okay, another posse decided they were going to go hunt it down and failed. Uh, one hunter decided to hunt it with dogs. He was convinced this was a timber wolf. And then his dogs ran into the thicket and turned around and ran right back out at him. He looked in the thicket and he's seen it and she said it's not a wolf, it's a real monster. Uh, 1912, the last sighting for the year that was in the papers. After a snowfall, a hunter discovered giant footprints in the snow. He decided to turn his dogs loose, and when they went after it, he hears this loud blood-curdling roar, and the dogs turn around and come running right back to him, yipping. This is one of the newspaper headlines. I'll read this to you in case you can't read it due to the lighting or the wrinkles, but it said, What is it abroad at Minicaw? Queer critter is terrorizing community is death to dogs. <laughs> Gotta love the alliteration these guys used. Horrible critter sighted by Hankins in the Stygian darkness. Ninaka Critter is loose again. Chase for the cunning critter is futile. So, you can kind of see that this was kind of a big story in the area. 1913, the year of the monster. A local man reported seeing a black animal on the outskirts of town in a cow pasture. As the creature was, he was watching it, it actually went into town. So, he decided to follow it. He made it all the way to the college. Then he heard it roar and it took off. Looks like it actually stepped on a bottle and broke it because they found bloody footprints. Multiple people heard it, several saw it run away. This is a picture of the college there in Chickasha, the administration building, you go there today, it still looks like that. And at the time, there wasn't really anything behind it. It was on the edge of town. Behind it was nothing but fields and thickets. This is another picture of it. So the creature made it that far into town. Wasn't the last. A local cop reported he seen a similar creature when he was a kid in Kentucky. They called it the Wallopus. Uh, again, the creature got seen at the college, this time by the girls that were there. And about this time, something strange happened. All the stray dogs and cats in Chickasha vanished. Uh, the mayor supposedly actually sent a request to the state asking for the state to send in militia to help deal with this. So people were quite clearly getting scared. Uh, several of the farmers around Nenica reported seeing it again on a couple of occasions. Uh, then it got seen on the, at the oil fields near Rock Creek by workers. Rock Creek is a creek just south of Nenica. And then a postman delivering mail reported he seen it. He wasn't as surprised at its appearance as how much it stunk. Uh, another posse went after the creature again. They found giant footprints and caught a glimpse of it near Norge. They said it was a huge black beast. Numerous people in the Norge area reported seeing the creature afterwards. So apparently they actually flushed it towards Norge. Okay. Then it popped up back at Chickasha a few days later. It was seen near a home. 
The witness said it was a black beast with fiery eyes and a broad nose. Sounds a lot like eye shine. And then a man reported seeing the critter just outside of town near the river. He said it was really tall. A man new to the area just moved in there reported seeing a man-like creature just outside of town. He didn't know what he saw. He just said he seen some kind of hairy thing that looked like a man. Everybody informed him that he just met the Chickasha critter. A local police officer saw it, and he said that when he was a boy in, in the down around San Antonio, Texas, he seen it, and they called it the River Wayne Doodle. My, some of these names might sound strange, but it was a different time. I have met some old timers that called these things Wallaruckuses, so it's not as strange as you would think. Now, the sightings kind of start teetering off after 1913, but the next thing might have a, to be the reason why, because the police started arresting people when they said they saw it. Uh, when I said the gentleman that saw one just outside of town that was new to the area, this is the location where he saw it at. This is kind of to the northeast of Chickasha. And this was actually taken in the 50s, but same bridge. Uh, however, the police arresting witnesses didn't stop it. A creature got seen outside the city hall eating out of a trash can by a court clerk. Scared the old boy half to death. At this point, the police not only began to threaten to arrest them, they actually started to threaten them physically with a uh, flogging. A reporter near Ninica decided he was going to go looking for it, found a trail, and he found some bits of dead animals. And towards the end of the trail, when he was nearing the Washita River, he reported seeing a tall, black, woolly bean walk away. This is Main Street of Chickasha, just to give you an idea what it looks like. And again, this is about the time, same time frame. You're going to notice you don't see a lot of cars on that street. I'll get back to that in a minute. This, pa this painting was done, like I said, about the same time frame. And if you go down to that street in Chickasha today, it looks the same, except it's been paved. More newspaper headlines. Critter capers on the college campus. Consternation at City Hall caused by the critter. Round up the real critter. Men may come and go, but I go on forever. The critter. The critter all tale. Sightings did not stop there. 1914, the critter was seen killing a young hunting dog in Ninica. People started missing dogs and cats again. And the wave of panic broke out. They were certain the dreaded critter had returned. 1915, theories abound. A friend of a witness reported that in Collinsville, Texas, eh, Collinsville, Texas, they had a near identical creature they called the Collinsville Animale. The creature was seen again around Ninica, this time by railroad workers. They said that they had heard this, of the same type of creatures living in the mountains of eastern Oklahoma. In other words, here. This is the old train depot at Ninica. This is where those workers would have been stationed out of. 1916, the hunters arrived. Now when I say hunters, these were big game hunters coming from all over wanting to bag the critter. People from out of state began to arrive with the intention of putting this thing's head on their mantle. Uh, one of them didn't get a shot out, but he was on the Washita River and reported seeing a baby critter. He said it looked like a little kid covered in hair. Uh, 
And we got some more headlines. Oscar finds the little critter. Uh, Cavanine says it's not the critter. 1917. There was a vague report that the critter was seen near Norge. It was a pretty dead year. That was actually the only one for 1970. So either the critter wasn't being as prominent or the air in the area, or the police had actually succeeded in scaring the living snot out of the witnesses. 1919, the army versus the critter. The critter was seen again at the edge of town. This time, it was a retired army officer that saw the creature. So he got a bunch of off-duty soldiers from Fort Seal to go with him with the intention of hunting this thing down once and for all. The 1920, the critter's last hurrah. There was a group of men traveling to a nearby town, or traveling to Chickasha from a nearby town called Tabler, and they reported seeing the critter.